Hi, and welcome to Newswire LA. I'm your host, Chin Thomas Angsi. Today we're out in Ladera Park in Los Angeles County, and we're going to be joined shortly by Danette Myers. Danette Myers is a candidate for the County of Los Angeles District Attorney's Office. The election's just about two weeks away, and everybody's getting into high gear. Well, Newswire LA managed to snag some time with Danette, and she's going to join us right here in a few minutes. So sit back, and let's get ready to get to know Danette Myers, candidate for district attorney. All right, welcome to Newswire LA. We're interviewing candidate for district attorney, Danette Myers. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. My first question is to the audience, who is Danette Myers? Danette Myers is a 26 year veteran of the LA County District Attorney's Office, a lifelong Democrat and a lifelong resident of Los Angeles County. I've lived here over 50 years. Uh, attended school in St. Albert, the great uh, elementary school in Compton, California. Uh, went on to Regina Chaley High School, then on to the University of California at San Diego. And graduating from Howard University School of Law. Came back to Los Angeles uh, and began my work as a lawyer in the L.A. County District Attorney's Office. And have you, all, have you always been in the public sector? Have you practiced privately? One year I practiced privately. And after that year I realized I want to return back to the public sector. Uh, I love serving the citizens of Los Angeles County. It was a very gratifying and enjoyable work that I've done for the last 26 years. And I'd like to continue doing it as the top cop in L.A. County. All right, and speaking of that, Steve Cooley is now termed out of the uh, position. And the position's up for grabs, and you're running against a number of people, many from your office and Carmen Trutanich from the city of Los Angeles. What separates Danette Myers from all of those other candidates who are in the race? Well, first of all, Steve Cooley's not termed out. I think he's just not going to seek re-election for a fourth term. What makes me different from everyone else is, first of all, I've been elected before. I was elected uh, as the president of Los Angeles County Bar Association, which is the largest local voluntary bar association uh, in the nation. So that sets me apart. I have a, a unique understanding of the justice system, not just the criminal justice system, but the entire justice system. And I think that the other candidates don't have that perspe broad perspective like I do. Additionally, I have been uh, endorsed by the Democratic Party of Los Angeles County. No other candidate has been uh, endorsed. I've been endorsed by 16 Democratic clubs. The former DA of LA County, Gil Garcetti, has endorsed my candidacy, as well as three mayors and two city councilmen. I think that sets me apart from the other candidates. Uh, additionally, I have a three-pronged uh, goal to do in the DA's office. First of all, I'm independent of, of Steve Cooley. And I think that a lot of the people running are not independent of Steve Cooley. I have my own agenda that I'd like to set for the DA's office. I want to reform the criminal justice system by reforming the juvenile justice system. I also want to reform the death penalty. And I want to bring our office back to prosecuting environmental crimes. I think it's really important that we do that, particularly among the, in the areas where there's a lot of hazardous waste dumping that's not really been dealt with. Uh, it, it largely goes undetected, and I think citizens really need uh, prosecution in those areas. Okay. You spoke earlier about reforming the death penalty, or having the death penalty as part of your agenda, I should say. In November, potentially, the voters of California could be asked to consider if they want to abolish the death penalty altogether. What's your thought on that, and what's your stand on that? I think that that initiative that will be on the ballot is a good initiative. Uh, I believe that the system is certainly in need of repair. We are not executing people on death row. There are over 700 inmates on death row and people are dying of old age. Our system seems to want to continue a process that's just not working. We're spending billions of dollars retaining that system when we could take that money and use it toward educational programs and other things. I believe that the initiative does two things. One, it abolishes the death penalty, but it also sets aside money and that money can be given to law enforcement agencies to go in and investigate unsolved murders, which I think is very, very important. There are largely a, a chunk of people in Los Angeles County who are victims who's, uh, and who have not had their cases uh, resolved, and meaning their victims, their family members have been victims of homicides. And so I'd like to see that money going toward law enforcement so that law enforcement can really go in and investigate who committed those murders. I think that's much more important. But what do you say to those people who are sitting at home right now, especially especially the victims' families who have waited, let's say, 25 and 33 years for that individual who's sitting on death row to go to uh, to go to the death chamber. 
who want that to be something that happens. What do you say to those people to, to comfort their feelings and also to still believe in, in what you're putting forward? Well, I believe, first of all, I'm morally not opposed to the death penalty. I've prosecuted six death penalty cases, four people on death row. People who, the victims of, whose family members are sitting there waiting for these people to be executed are gonna be waiting for the rest of their lives. When you've got 700 people on death row, you're probably not gonna to get to them within the next 20 to 30 years. Trust me, uh, think about it. Uh, Richard Ramirez, people would be surprised to know that he is still on death row. Bitteker is still on death row. These people are not gonna be executed if California continues the system that they have. What's the problem? The appeals process is so lengthy. When you have an appellate process on average that goes about 25 to 30 years, the person by the time you're ready to execute him or her is a different person. And trust me, uh, by that time there are so many more appeals waiting for that person that they're probably going to die on death row. And that's, what the cost, that's where the cost comes in. And I think we have to sit back and say, if you're not going to shorten that appeals time, then you're going to have to get rid of the system. It's as simple as that. Um, I think they'd have more comfort knowing that the person has been dealt with and they don't have to deal with these issues over and over and over again. But I think it's very traumatic for a family when an individual comes up to be executed and all of a sudden the appellate courts say, no, nope, another three years, another four years. It's just, I think it's horrible. I had to retry a death penalty case, James Hurd, who was a man who, execu who literally executed this little 11-year-old girl. He raped, he tortured her for over two and a half years. One of the worst moments in my life was to have to go back and tell her mother after about 18 years that we have to redo the case. And she had to come back into court and relive all of what happened to her. And it just was horrendous. And now he goes to the bottom of the barrel. Uh, his appellate process starts all over again. So she may in her lifetime not see him executed if the system doesn't change. One other thing comes to mind right now Los Angeles County is one of the most populous counties in the nation and if you get this office you definitely be in a very top position and as you know Los Angeles County is full of high profile cases some of those high profile cases over the years have brought down DA's what's your plan for dealing with a lot of high profile incendiary cases that are coming down the line because there definitely will be more putting the right prosecutors on those cases not focusing so much on the publicity associated with those cases and trying them like we try cases every single day in the criminal justice system. I've tried a lot of high profile cases. I've tried a lot of murder cases. If you just stick to your game, uh, keep your eyes on the prize, guess what? At the end of the day, justice will be served. And that's what I try to communicate to lawyers that I supervise throughout uh, the county of Los Angeles is just keep your eyes on the prize. What your goal is, your mission is to seek justice. And once that happens, I think the public is satisfied. Uh, a lot of times people get embroiled in the publicity that goes on. Um, they get sidetracked. The judges, some of the judges get sidetracked. The lawyers get sidetracked. Uh, when I did the Lindsay Lohan case, the one thing is I never got sidetracked. I knew exactly what I wanted to do and I went ahead and did it. And talk to me a little bit about what it was like dealing with the pressure that comes with that case. You said, you said you stayed on track, but there had to be some, you know, some pressures that some days you just said, eh, I'd rather not be doing this. You know, it, it was amazing with her because I couldn't believe the press associated with that case. When I handled the probation violation, there had to have been over a hundred different media outlets throughout the world sitting outside the, the Beverly Hills Courthouse on a case that for the large part wasn't much in the criminal justice system. It was the standard, regular, driving under the influence case. At the same time, I was prosecuting James Hurd uh, for the murder of Katrina Brown and trying to seek the death penalty with respect to that case. The press was not interested in that case at all. They were more interested in Lindsay Lohan and everything that she was going through as opposed to this incredibly serious case that dealt with this poor little girl who had been killed and tortured and the press just didn't care. I gave a challenge to the press. Uh, I said, you know what, tomorrow uh, Mr. Hurd is going to be sentenced to death. I want to know how many of you are going to be at his sentencing as opposed to those of you who are out here today on this case. Uh, two people showed up. It was amazing. Of all of the, the media that was out there, only two were interested in what happened to this little girl. Really sad. So that was the frustrating thing, I think, most of all. Now, in your position currently at the DA's office downtown, 
Explain to us what that position is and do you oversee other assistant deputies? What I do is I actually work out of the airport branch, but a lot of the complex cases that I handle are tried downtown. So by and large, people see me downtown all the time and they're wondering, what are you doing down here? I thought you were assigned to the airport. But my, most of my cases go downtown to the complex criminal uh, floor, which is the ninth floor of the, uh, uh, the, the Clara uh, Schultridge Foltz Courthouse, which, no, which uh, was called the Criminal Courts Building for many, many, many years. Um, and what I do is I handle those kinds of cases and I teach younger DAs. They second chair those cases with me and I teach them how to prosecute those kinds of cases. So that's largely what I do. And that gives you the experience of working with other people, overseeing other people, and, and overseeing the work that comes with those cases. Exactly. And prior to that, under the previous DA, Gil Garcetti, who I supported, I did not support uh, Mr. Cooley, I actually supervised two offices. I supervised the Bellflower Area Office and the Flor Florence Firestone Area Office. But when Mr. Cooley came in, he brought his own people in. And so, you know, you sort of relegated back down to a trial position. But I still was able to supervise people because my bosses said, you know, one of the jobs we would like you to do, based upon all the experience you have, is to actually supervise DAs and teach them how to do cases in court. So that's largely what I do today. And talk to me about what it's like in your experience dealing with law enforcement and how you plan on broadening that relationship when you become DA. Law enforcement, terrific people in law enforcement. Unfortunately, when you have a couple bad ones, it sort of taints everybody. Uh, I believe that our office has the duty and the responsibility to train law enforcement officers to make sure when they're out on the streets that they only stop people when there's probable cause to stop people. Uh, that there is nothing that a law enforcement officer uh, should be doing out in the field that he can't stand up or she can't stand up and be very proud of. Uh, I believe that they should be in the community, working with the community. If there are problems, those problems need to be addressed by both the law enforcement higher-ups and the DA's office. And so I would like to have an open dialogue with them. I would also like to have town hall meetings uh, with law enforcement and the DA to talk about problems in the community and to let the people know what's going on, what new laws are being proposed. Uh, if they have any issues with law enforcement doing anything, we need to know about that. And I think that that would be a really good way in which the community can bond with law enforcement and the DA's office. All right. Let's talk, about, let's talk a little bit about what it's like being on the campaign trail. You guys have been out there uh, campaigning. You've got an election that's coming up on June 5th. Now, give me a little walk through the mechanics of what it's like to, camp to campaign throughout this large county for this particular office. It's incredibly tough to campaign for this office because the office of DA is not on everyone's radar. They really don't know who the DA of Los Angeles County is. I've been surprised. Most people don't even know there's going to be an election and an important election on June the 5th, and they should know that. They don't really understand that the DA is probably the most important uh, elected office in the county of Los Angeles. It truly is. What we do affects your everyday life. Uh, most people don't know that unless they're a victim of a crime uh, or unless one of their loved ones has been accused of a crime and then they come into the criminal justice system. It's been tough because LA is such a large county. People don't realize it. Uh, one day I'm going from La Cunana Flint Ridge to Long Beach. Another day you could see me in, in um, Santa Clarita and back down in Compton. And, and trust me, on the freeways of LA County, it takes a long time and it is very, very tiring. But it's been very enlightening. I've really had a great opportunity to meet people throughout the Los Angeles County, uh, to understand what their issues are. Every single region in Los Angeles County has different issues. People are concerned about different things, and so it's, it's really been a very enlightening time for me. Raising money is very difficult, especially during a period of time where you have so many assembly races and Senate races, where people are more in tune to those races as opposed to the DA's race, and to try to get money from those people to say, you know, can you give me a little money because I'm trying to run for office and everyone needs money running for office, uh, it's been very difficult. Uh, but I have uh, had a great time. I've raised a enough a considerable amount of money I'd like to raise more uh, so we'll have a lot of mailers out there we'll have uh, my name will be on probably about 1.5 million pieces of mail uh, we've purchased a number of mailers uh, slate cards and uh, having been endorsed by the Democratic Party I am hoping that the Democratic Party will put out something with my name on it I'm told they will and so I'm hoping that that will happen having been endorsed by a number of clubs one 
being the New Frontier Democratic Club, they just put out an endorsement, a piece in the Sentinel. So people will see my name and hopefully they will vote for me based upon my message, my length of service in the DA's office, uh, and my ties to Los Angeles County. No other candidate has lived in Los Angeles longer than I have. All right, one of the things that probably sticks out in my mind right now with all of the races at the moment, and maybe you can, maybe you can enlighten me and the rest of the audience, usually during this time I come home to storms of mailers saying vote for me and I'm endorsed by so, such and such. I haven't seen a single mailer this election season and in a weird way it, it concerns me. Where is everybody? I think those mailers will be coming out next week. Uh, the absentee ballots were just mailed and you, normally the mailers track the absentee ballots. They come out about a week, a week and a half after the absentee ballots. So trust me, uh, they will start coming out probably next week. Some of them have come out. just depends upon where you live in the county of Los Angeles because what happens is mailers are targeted to certain groups. So, for instance, some mailers are targeted just toward women. Other mailers are targeted just toward Democrats. And in particular areas where people know there's a propensity to vote in those areas, those mailers are targeted in those areas. You might not live in an area where people vote. So that might be why you're not getting them now. But that's what they normally do. The, most of the experts will tell you this is probably going to be a very low turnout. There isn't anything that's really sexy on the ballot, and so people may not come out and vote. Additionally, we all know who the nominees are going to be for each respective party for president. We all know that President Obama is the no Democratic nominee and Mitt Romney is the Republican nominee. Now, if there was a challenge in either of those races, I think that would have brought a number of people out and you'd have seen a lot more mailers. But you're not going to see mailers uh, as much as you will see them in November when there is going to be a vote for the president. Stay tuned for more on this exciting story coming up after this station break.